Hello again, and here's part two of our Lord of the Rings scene. So previously we did the basic gold texture and we set up our surface there with our um, map on it. Now I want to add a little bit of texturing to this map to make it look a little bit more lifelike and give it some depth. So um, come back into the node editor. We have our ground selected there. Um, so we're going to add something called a normals map. Now, you can generate these normal maps um, through a website. I just uh, Google create normal maps and you'll find this website here. Um, so cpetri.github.io forward slash normal map hyphen online or you just Google creating normal maps and, and you'll find this website. So all I basically did was um, brought in our Middle Earth map. Once that has um, loaded into here, you'll see that we can create the normals from here. You can choose the strength and whatever the parameters you want. Um, now the normal map that I'm using is um, packaged in the zip file which can download from the link below this video. So um, you don't have to worry about creating this yourself, but if you're doing your own project and you need to know how to create a normals map, this is the website that I use. So I have that normals map already created. So what we're going to do is bring in a second image texture to, so we'll open up the node that we created previously for the ground. And what we're going to add here is another image texture. And it's going to use the same generated coordinates for the vector, but this time we're going to open up our um, normals map. So the Middle Earth normal. Open image. Okay. Now once we've brought that in, the output from this is going to go to a bump map, uh, a bump shader. So we'll bring a bump shader in, and we're going to bring the color into the height, and I'm going to select invert because I want these bumps to go inwards, not outwards. So we'll invert that map. And the output from this will go to the normal of the diffuse shader that we previously created. And you'll see that now, if we look at our texture over here, there's our bumps that have basically been created. Now, by adjusting the distance and strength, you can create more bumps or less bumps to this um, texture. So the greater the distance, the kind of bigger those bumps will be, the bigger those textures will be. You can see here, if I turn off invert, they tend to stick outwards rather than being cut inwards. So you can also connect this up to the normals and you'll see that, that also gives us this um, texture as well so it's actually down to you as to whether you want to use it plugged into the normals or into the height or you can actually make a combination of both so you can duplicate this image texture again plug the generated coordinates into the vector and then plug the output of this into the height and then you'll get a combination of the both which will give quite a nice effect in the end. You will see though it's darkened down our surface a little bit. It's not quite as bright as it previously was. So we can adjust the distance a little bit. You can also adjust the strength and that will brighten it again a little bit. What I'm going to do to bring a little bit more brightness into this is we're going to add in a glossy shader. So the glossy shader will just add a little bit of reflection and bring a bit of brightness back. So I'll bring that glossy shader in and then we're going to need a mix shader to mix these two together.
I'll bring the roughness back and bring the factor back. We only want a very small amount of this glossiness, probably 0 0.01, just a very small amount of shininess. So we'll get a little bit of reflection coming from this surface here. Then we can also add a brightness and contrast, which I'm going to place in between Let's just disconnect that it needs to go in between the image texture and the diffuse so now if we increase the brightness just a small amount it'll bring back a little bit of brightness for us there we can just increase that a little bit you don't want to go too much. 0 0.02 just to bring out a little bit of brightness. I'm going to increase the contrast slightly as well. That helps to bring out some of the color and give it a little bit of an aged look. All right, so we're basically done with our work surface there. Um, which the ring is sitting on. It's beginning to look pretty good. So we've got some bumps to it. We have a little bit of shininess to it. We've um, brought out some of the color and brightened it up slightly. So all of that is now looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to move our plane surface a little bit this way. So we can see a little bit more of the map around here. It'd be nice if we could see those words that say Middle Earth there. So I'm going to grab hold of the ring also. I'm going to move that back a little. Yeah, so we can see a little bit of the, of the map area there. I think that looks quite nice. Okay, um, now I'm going to create a black background in here. So we'll go to our tools. Um, sorry, create, create a new plane object. I'm going to drag this back to here or we'll rotate it on the X axis 90 degrees. Let's scale it up, drag it back to here. Go to our camera view. I want to make sure that's filling the, the back view there. And I'm going to shift and D to duplicate. I'm going to bring this over to here and we're going to rotate this on the z-axis 90 degrees. I'm going to scale it on the y. Okay, now it's just going to be a matter of lining these two things up. It should come right up to the edge, and the same with this one. Doesn't matter if they overlap a little, bring that in. Now I'll create a new material slot, diffuse color will be jet black. Change that to background. Go to rendered and we'll go to our camera view. Okay, I just want to make sure that this is filling the view. Scale that one up. Let's 
scale this one up. Okay, yeah, so now we have the black background and we've got our ring in place. Now the black background you can see now has darkened things down a little bit. So I'm going to add in another light source. And I might actually want to change our environment texture. Let's try this setup instead. Okay, that's that looks a little a little bit too much reflection on that side here. Let's Check out this one. And that one looks a bit better. We got some nice reflections there. But around the bottom of the ring, we've got the reflections of the map. So that's looking okay, but it, still not quite happy with that environment texture. Let's try this one. It's a little too bright. I think we'll stick with our original one. And I'm just going to add in some additional light sources. So come back to the solid view, create a point light. And I'm going to place that probably over here towards the front. And we can up the strength of this. Give a bit more lighting at the front here. And I'm just going to leave it as a point light for now, but we may change that later on. Okay. So in the next tutorial part, we're going to be looking at um, the texturing of the ring itself and how we're going to do some UV unwrapping um, putting to put the, the text onto the ring and then we will um, be looking at how we can do the, the glowing effect of that text. So the nodes for that are a little bit complex, so it might take a little bit of time to go through, but um, it's well worth the effort. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.